Hello, this is Craig, and today we're going to talk about tools for board inspection. So when you're making your own circuit boards, in, you know, prototype level that, like I'm doing here, um, you, you, know, you do your board design, you send out the, for the boards that we made, they come back, you apply some solder paste, put the parts down, run through a reflow, and then you get it out of the oven and you go through and you look at for various problems that happen during the soldering process. Those problems typically are solder bridges, misplaced components, uh, and uh, pads that don't have enough solder on them. And so to do that, you, you know, you got to visually look around at the board. Because surface mount components are getting ever and ever smaller, it requires your eyes to be better and better. Now, fortunately, my eyes are still pretty good. I can actually do, without glasses, I can do, 0603 parts are really easy, 0402 parts are okay. Anything smaller, and I don't, even, I don't even bother doing that for my particular designs. But for the last 20 years, I've relied on a loop. So a loop is just a regular magnifying glass. And miraculously, this is my one and only loop I've ever had. And this little guy and myself have been through hundreds of designs with this little board, this little loop. And, you know, you kind of look through, and it's a little, little getting used to to, to uh, see what you're doing, but I've, I've found a lot of bridges with, with that. A couple years ago, I bought one of these. Uh, this is a must tool desktop microscope. Came with this little stand. It was relatively inexpensive. I think it was about $45. 800 by 600 screen. It, it has an SD slot. Completely self-contained. A uh, battery inside. Uh, LED lights underneath here. And uh, I think I've used this about two times. Primarily because of the quality of the video that's on here or the resolution really didn't help out in doing board inspection at all. Plus the fact that the light wasn't bright enough and then the depth of field is also an issue with these. And when you start tilting your board in here to look down along the edge of an IC, it really was ineffective. So I just relied more on the loop. Um, in the last uh, couple years, I've had uh, an assistant help me with doing this board production. And so I decided to you know, uh, to provide him with some updated tools. And I didn't want to get him a loop and say, go at it. Um, so I bought one of these. Um, you'll see it here. And uh, so anyway, I'll show you, I'll show you, you know, on, on a little, my little thumbnail. So I have one of these here. We'll go into more detail about what, what this is. But this is an Amscope UHM 350-11. And it's a 20, 20 to 100X 3.5 megapixel HDMI output camera. So uh, I'm thinking that we'll have on, on the, uh, uh, near the assembly area, we'll just have a very large monitor that will output uh, 1080p. And we'll run it out of this camera and we'll do board inspection with this instead. And it comes with this uh, articulating arm, which is 11 inches. So we'll be able to actually position it a lot better than we could with the Mustech uh, little desktop microscope. I got it on Black Friday for $50 off, so I paid $250. We're going to get this over on the bench and we'll go ahead and uh, run it through its paces. I've not powered it on. I haven't played with it at all. Um, I just pulled it out of the box. So let's head over to the bench. All right, I found a board, an old board of mine. This is a solar test board. And what I got on the screen here is a Max 11 uh, 11060. It's a simultaneous ADD converter, four channel differential input. And this part down here that I'm looking at, if I had a pointer, I'd point at it. Um, yeah, let me get my pointer out. So this part right here, is the part we're looking at. This is a 0.5 millimeter pitch and I'm about uh, eight inches. Um, my camera is about eight inches off the board and so this top knob over here, I don't know if you can see that or not. The top knob is the focus and so this is perfectly doable at this point. I mean this is really nice for rework. You got a lot of room in here. And uh, some criticisms, criticisms of these kind of projectors is the fact that there's a lag between the camera and the, uh, and the display on the screen. I'm going to show you how, how well that is. Hopefully you'll be able to see this on the screen. I'm going to try to get my hand out of the way here. So 
So if you're moving here, I don't see really any lag. I mean, this is completely acceptable to uh, to use this as a rework station. Now I'm eight inches off of here. Let's get a little uh, closer in and see what we can do over there. I'll try to take some pictures of the screen here, and we will. I'll pop those up here as I, as I make my way down closer to the board. All right, so I'm going to make this about half the distance and we'll see where we end up getting. And this stand here, this thing is, this is uh, excellent stand. Uh, the, the bottom of the the bottom of this stand is, is fairly weighted. So you can actually run this arm all the way out and it will hold the camera um, pretty far out on the extension. So you can kind of see we're out of focus. So we'll go ahead and focus in here. All right, so here's our chip in question. So what I found is that this knob here, these two knobs do different types of light intensity. They might be, they might have to deal with also with the, um, uh, the color balance in the light. Um, so it does, there is a lot of light placed on here, but to be honest with you, I'm just running off of some uh, panel LED lights over here. And this is perfectly illuminated. It's pretty dark in here now, but on the screen it looks fine. So with these, these lights really do illuminate the board pretty well. So I'm going to take a picture of this with no lights on. You can see what this looks like. Right now I am at... Um, where am I? I am about four inches off of the board. We'll take a picture of this. Okay, we'll keep moving down. See how close we can get. And this is one of those kind of goofy things here, but we're going to get down to about, all right, how close are we off of there now? We are about, about two inches off of the board. So let's see what we get over here. Let's try to focus this in. Here comes our image. Um, we need to go. Where are we going here? There's our, there's okay, there's our chip here. So let's, uh, all right, let's see if we can get this to focus. I may be a little too close. Oh no, I'm not, I'm not. Okay, so this is no lights on. This is just the lights from my two uh, studio lights here and this is uh, this is actually great well what it's actually showing you is that <laughs> you probably can't see this but there's a lot of dust and crap on this board because I just I pulled it off the bench it's been sitting over on the bench for probably about I don't know four years so it's collected a lot of dust that's what all that white particle stuff is so let's see if we're working down at this resolution how fast the uh, screen actually updates now it may be uh have slower updates it kind of looks like it from the light intensity so um yeah i can definitely tell you that that working at this resolution is going to be pretty difficult because the uh, exposure on the from the ccd coming out of the camera is pretty long so let's turn the lights back on which will ultimately kick the exposure up and now you'll see when I move the board. Okay, now it moves, uh, you know, in near real time. So these lights are really important that you um, that you adequately light your your board so that you can uh, kick down the um, uh, kick down the 
the acquisition time for the CCD. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here. Hopefully you can see that I'm going to get on that pin number two right there. If I can. Now my soldering iron, this is not the soldering iron I'd use. This one, this one's actually quite huge, but you can kind of see it here. And so that's kind of what we're doing. So the tip of this actually covers three of those pins. So this tip is, the tip of this is probably about, was that about four? It's probably about four. Five mil point five. It's probably about two and a half millimeters is what the diameter of this tip is. And this this resolution with these lights on and at this uh, frame rate, this is this is excellent. Um, this is nothing like that old cheap camera that I had before. So let's look at this ruler. Now this is. Um, this this ruler here is uh, the DigiKey ruler, and it's it's for board uh, board layout. It's got a lot of dimensions on it. It's got a lot of footprints of various packages on it. It's double sided. It shows you the distances of everything. So what I'm going to show show you is down here. This little area right down here has got some really fine pitched um, traces. So we'll kind of show you what the resolution looks like on the screen. So which one am I on? This is 0.4 millimeters right here. And this is this is excellent. Let's get a little more focused in on here. Now the depth of field at this distance here is really quite shallow. So you gotta be you gotta have your, your board kind of flat. So all right, so we're pretty pretty much there. So let me take a picture of that. And if we go down, I mean, this is 0.8 down here. Let's see what else we got over here. Um, here is a D. This is a TSOP package over here. We're going to figure out where I am on this thing. We're 603. Okay, we got to get over here a little bit. Okay, D is a TSOP, TSOP package, which is really fine pitched. So I would say that this camera, this camera is a winner for doing this uh, because the lighting allows you to uh, kick up and reduce the exposure time on the on the uh, the CCD, so you get a really high frame rate. So we'll just kind of take a look around this board a little bit more. I'm gonna I'm gonna move this back up again so you can kind of see a little bit more of the board, and and this will give you a little bit more room too to work. So this board's got a variety of different uh, packages on it. This is just an experimental prototype. Okay, so this pat this guy over here is a what is that guy? Uh, this is a Dallas part. This is a real time clock. All right, so this where am I? This this part here is a, the uh, a Dallas real-time clock. This one up here is, uh, I think it's an LM358, which is an op amp, um, high current op amp. So we'll turn the lights off here and we'll see what we are coming out of the, the uh, ambient light here. We're getting a little washout. Actually, we're getting washout because there's a connector right here. So let's, 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 uh, let's turn this around here a little bit. Here, that's, that makes it a lot easier to read. Okay, so that looks like it's a Dallas uh, 1337. So that's a pretty good representation of how this looks. Um, I know that there's some people have uh, kind of cursed doing rework using a, 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 a monitor like this um, but I think that you know my assistant who's kind of used to looking at monitors all day long will have no problem doing rework with a real soldering iron and um, working on a monitor like this and not have to require a um, stereo microscope yeah this is pretty nice
Okay, well that was my very quick review of a UHM-50 that I got from Amscope. Uh, this little unit here has got superior quality to what I was using, which was a loop. Uh, and it's going to marry up just fine with a, a monitor arm and a 1080p monitor that I got laying around here. Uh, the image quality come out of this is excellent. There's really no lag if you go ahead and use the internal lighting on here because it fairly well illuminates the board that you're looking at. And that ultimately kicks up the frame rate, which decreases the lag between the camera and the monitor. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a well-constructed device. Uh, this arm is actually uh, fairly well holds the camera in place. And this base is, is large and can hold the camera in any position where the, when the arm is out here in the front. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to conclude by saying that uh, this is not a sponsored video. I bought this camera on Black Friday. Uh, it arrived and it's been sitting around for a few days. I just got it out today. Uh, unboxed it, turned it on. It was really pretty self-explanatory. I didn't even look at the manual. I just figured out what these front panel buttons were. And all I really cared about was how to take still images for this video. Okay, that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching.